Alex's poetry portfolio. The process I went through with basically all my poems, but this one especially, it was four elements, which all led up to the fourth. Well, the first one was brainstorming. In brainstorming, I was thinking about what poems I could write and ideas I had, which, for example, I made my heart, which is a bunch of different ideas that made me, a bunch of different feelings and things that made me think of poems I could write. And so whenever I looked at that heart, I thought of a new idea. And so that was in brainstorming. And then I would think of just, and maybe I'd put down a few words that, that, that made me think of poetry. And I'd write, and I'd write some person, and I'd take some personal narratives and take out from the personal narratives. I'd put, I'd, I'd think of from the personal narratives, I'd think of, the, of what in the personal narrative can be a poem and try and make that. Okay, after brainstorming was drafting, which was where I would um, write down then, for real draft, on a piece of paper, what my poem was. And it wasn't my final copy, it was just, and then, um, and then came revising, which is, and then came revising, which what I did then was I revised by taking out parts that weren't good. I made it more clear and focused. I, um, I added more descriptive and um, figurative language to it. And, and I made different, and I sort of added different elements to make it a better, stronger poem and clearer. Then I moved on to editing, which is where I would um, do um, different line breaks and choose where I should put my line breaks and commas and periods. After that was to my final copy, which is where I put it on a final piece of paper and finished it. So here's the poem, Sorry. I did it. I'm sorry. I can hear her feet slamming on the ground. My heart bangs in my chest. Dew drops leak out of my eyes, forming an ocean. I'm no more than air. The doorknob cringes. I want to hide in the corner and cry. Cry out my fear, hatred, stress. The door bangs open, chipping the wall paint. She quietly walks in, her cheeks red as tomatoes. She wraps her arms around me, like a mama bear does to her baby. I'm not air anymore. Now, I'm fire. In this poem, I thought about deletion because Miss Gladden told us that a poem can't, it has to have focus when I thought that a poem could just be all about whatever. And so um, what happened was first, well, I had all my words down and it wasn't really a poem. So I had to delete a lot of them and that's part of revising. And I only put in the real words that really meant um, the poem and that really made the reader understand. Here's the poem, Me. Life isn't a story. You don't get whatever you want. Don't just hide in the corner and stop. And don't be ashamed of who you are. Be proud and strong. Use this page as a mirror. Look at your reflection. You are you. No one can ever change that. Embrace it. By Alex Treisman. When I wrote this poem, I was thinking about using vivid words, which are words that help the reader um, have a picture in their mind. And um, I used vivid words because when I wrote this, it was actually meant to be a guess what poem, which you would guess what I'm reading about. But now I made it just a poem about an object from... Here's the poem, Snowflake. A delicacy, a thin glass shape, floating through the wind. Put out your hand. It will kiss you and dissolve. When I wrote this poem, I was thinking about focus which is one of the elements of um, revision. And what I did for focus was I th read the poem. First, I made it just putting down the words that I thought were a poem. And I wouldn't just go like, OK, done. Instead, I went back and I read it. And I thought, hey, well, this part doesn't go at all with the title, Lies. And I would take that part away and maybe make it into a new poem. And it's also kind of doing delet deletion because I would delete out parts that, that took, took off focus um, and didn't make the reader understand. When, and I focused in on more of the parts that made the reader understand and focused into the title. Here's the poem, Lies. The lies drift in the air. They fall out of your mouth, leaving a trail of sorrow, regret, hatred. A phone call with no reception. They stick onto you like a little girl does to her mom. They sway in the wind, 
looking for a person to invade, looking for someone's feelings to crush as the words turn worse and worse, never ending. You can't stop the monster, the monster of lies in you. By the way, the picture of the phone was for the line, the phone call with no reception. Yeah. When I wrote this poem, um, I was thinking about personifications, which is a type of ma um, a figurative language. And a personification is where an object um, pretend is like doing human things. And in this poem, I thought that maybe it would make it kind of interesting and um, interesting if this sounded like a person or another type of thing than what it really was. Here is the poem, Where's My Homework? Every night, right when the moon becomes the only light, it wakes, sprouting its little legs. It calls. It calls out into the night to the others. They stomp out the doors, whether it's math papers or writing papers or history papers. They all leave, leave to hide in the classroom, waiting for the kid to cry, to tell the teacher in the morning, but, but, but it was right in my backpack. Then, they, then the papers snicker, waiting to rise again tomorrow morning. In this poem, I was thinking about repetition because I was thinking maybe for this poem it would be a cool effect if I had repeating things because that gets the reader to understand that sentence and know that that sentence is important or word. Here's the poem alone. I hear the ticking from the big gray clock. It tickles my ears. I look out the window, hoping to see her, hoping to see her on her old gray bike hoping to see her smiling face, but no one is there. I'm alone. I look around the attic, filled with boxes. Boxes filled with stress, tears, lies. I'm alone. Everything is gray. Gray boxes, gray walls, gray clock, gray rug. A sad color that makes me cry. I'm alone, but sad. I'm alone. When I wrote this poem, I was thinking about metaphors because I was thinking, well, firstly, this when we started poetry, I was thinking, well, anyways, what is poetry? What actually is it? I get that it's a bunch of words, but really, what is it? And that inspired me to write a poem. And so I used metaphors in this to, make, to show what I felt of what poetry was. Poetry. The only smile in an empty universe, the color in a black and white picture, the heartbeat of a ghost, the splash of cold water on a hot day, the sound of silence, the eye of an eagle, poetry.